Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. And you know what? If I had to sum up this game week in just a few words, I'll honestly say it was a week to forgive and forget because I effed up this game week so bad. But you know what? I was probably not the only one with that low of a rank. And my rank tanked faster than the Titanic. My rank tanked faster than Spurs at the North London Derby every season at home at the Emirates. Now, you know what? Let's get into this Game Week 6 recap review. But first, let me cue that intro real quick. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel and today I want to do a mini recap of game week six, how my game week went, what worked, what didn't, what did I mess up on and what really costed me my rank overall. Those of you who knew I was from 50k to 30k overall still within the top 50k in the world and right now I'm sitting at a high of 90k but you know what I know it's not it's not a race it's a marathon and there's still a lot of game weeks to go ahead so let's not get too focused on my rank and more importantly focus on not taking too many hits just like I did this game week I took a minus eight doing three transfers because I didn't wait early enough to listen to the press conferences prior to making my transfers, which really is something that I should have been more wary of, but I was more concerned with the fear of missing out and trusted my gut that Bamford would be fit and able to play. Get well soon to Patrick Bamford because it looks like he's going to be out for about a month approximately. We have yet to hear further information, and we also know that Luke Shaw is a 50-50 moving forward, but just like Harry Maguire last season, this is Ollie Tax, and we know Ollie might be able to play him against Everton. Who knows? Um, let's get into Game Week 6 recap. So Game Week 6 was an absolute nightmare for me. Um, it was a huge red arrow, something that I haven't seen since the start of the season and since last season, really. And I kind of stayed away from that and tried to improve in terms of catching price rises and falls prior to and also being able to play my captaincy, which was the Egyptian King Salah. The one Game Week I decided to play Cristiano Ronaldo was the one game week he blanked and did not take that penalty, which really costed my rank. And more importantly, the Egyptian King and Mikel Antonio delivered and hauled, which hurt my overall rank. Um, you know, it was a game week to forget overall, but let's not get carried too carried away. I still have time to improve and time to build up my rank, get to get back into that top 50K overall. Um you know, thankfully, there's a lot of game weeks ahead for me to make up on my mistakes and try to catch up. And also holding on to my other chips that I have left, not using them until a blank game week, um, such as a free hit for me to use it then, or even the triple captain to just hold off on that until there's juicier fixtures, such as a game week 10 onwards for Man City, for instance. Um I'm going to be doing a screen share to going through my team and then discussing with you guys what worked, what didn't, and also something that I'll look forward to, a brief glimpse of game week seven onwards. And those of you guys who are holding on to your wild card, I say now is the time to let go of those game week seven onwards. Chelsea, Man City have juicy fixtures. If you're looking into long term and trying to catch those price rises and drops, being able to sell players in order to get your budget midfielders, but also to get those premium forwards and that premium, those premium defenders is something to consider and look into. Um, I'm not doing a wild card since I already used my wild card, but I might be doing a video on a wild card draft, making a new account on FBL just to show you guys, you know, how a potential wild card team could look like and what could give you the best rate of returns and a haul this game week. And more importantly, that massive green arrow that everyone's looking for. Um, those of you guys who are casual FPL managers, let me know in the comments down below if you're still playing FPL or if you've given up all hopes. And like me, rule number one, you deleted the app and never looked back. But you know what? I always find my way right back here again, sitting here talking to you guys about what worked, what didn't, players to look out for, and also players to sell and forget about. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen now to show you guys my team selection overall, as well as, you know, how many points I got, what hits I took, and sort of how I did. Um, so moving on into the game week, basically, it 
wasn't as bad as I thought. The minus eight I took kind of paid off with the bonus points I received uh, um, from players. Now, Sanchez was a pain because he got a yellow card and that took away his points. Um, so it just ended on two points there. Um, now, I did take a minus eight, taking three transfers. I took um, because Bamford was ruled out, I had to do a quick swap to Bamford to Antonio. And prior to that, I had done Connor Cody to Rudiger, which I could have hold off on till game week um, seven. But unfortunately, I thought I'd jump the gun and do that ahead, saving me a transfer moving forward. But this is FPL. Luke Shaw is now injured, and it's a 50-50 whether he would play. Knowing Oli, it would be similar to a Harry Maguire situation, and he might be ready to play up against Everton. Um, I also ended up changing Jack Grealish to Sar, and thankfully Sar delivered, which was really great for my um, points this game week. Um, so I had the back line of Trent, Rudiger, and Shaw. My defenders um, were not able to keep a clean sheet, and it was really awful for me this game week. I expected Chelsea to do well, considering they were playing at home, and considering the form Rudiger is on. He's on incredible form, and a player to really look out for. Those of you guys who are looking for a, Sh a Luke Shaw replacement, it's a no-brainer to get a player like Rudiger, Alonso, or a Cancelo or Diaz if you're looking at Man City. Game week eight up until 28, Man City have good fixtures, and Cancelo is a player you can rely on to give you an attacking threat and also rate of returns there, and more likely to keep a clean sheet. Now, unfortunately, I did not captain Mohamed Salah. He delivered, but I failed and did not captain him this game week. I went with Cristiano Ronaldo, and he ended up blanking with just four points. Mohamed Salah on seven points. Sar with beautiful nine points. Benrama on three. Rafinha is a player that a lot of people had on their bench. Was not sure because of B Bielsa's press conference whether he would start or not, whether he was fit to play. Some people, it hurt their rank because they benched him, and that was eight points on their bench. Diego Jata was a player a lot of people got rid of early on and moved on to a player like Saar or even a player like Akai Havertz in the midfield. Now, I kept on to, I held on to Jata and it ended up paying off because he did get a goal. Um, I also had Antonio, but too bad I didn't captain him. Um, he got me eight points, though, which I can't complain. Now, my bench was um, Livermento, Duffy, and Scarlett. Um, a lot of people were hoping for the Livermento clean sheet. Um, but Crystal Palace, um, sorry, but Southampton ended up losing and Wolves ended up delivering with uh, Jimenez goal. Um, finally, he, find out, he found out how to score and got some end product. Jimenez was looking like a really tasty forward moving forward. And a lot of you guys in your wild cards already have him as a pick. Something to consider and look forward to if you're looking for a differential um, forward striker. So just some tips going on into game week seven, some things I noticed in terms of game week six review. Um, I also wanted to discuss, you know, players like a Cancelo, a Diaz, a Rudiger or an Alonso in that defense line. And those of you guys who are still holding on to Luke, Luke Shaw, you know, considering he might be able to fit to play for Everton. I know he's missing the UCL game due to injury. Um, so it's not really 100% guaranteed that he'll start for the Everton game. But those of you guys who already have Rudiger, you might want to look into an Alonso or a Christensen. Alonso's at 5.9 and Christensen's just at 5. Um, you know, Thomas Tuchel is not really prone to rotating them. The only thing with Alonso is he's not getting as much minutes as Rudiger is. And considering Rudiger's on really good form, uh, Thomas Tuchel is really dropping players who are not really being consistent. Um, but Alonso has been a consistent starter and something, you know, we're not sure whether it's going to be changing with their UCL games. Um, but we'll have to see later on tomorrow whether the Chelsea lineup and how to move forward from there. One thing I will advise you guys moving forward is wait till team sheets are out for the UCL to see who, which players are rested and who to move forward into your team selection going on into the weekend fixtures in the Premier League. Um, I also want to consider the fact that Chelsea's form and attacking threat in terms of defenders, you want to get in a Rudiger or an Alonso or even a Christensen just because of their form and their fixtures ahead are Saints, Brentford and Norwich. Easy fixtures and something to look forward to in terms of them keeping a clean sheet and also giving you an attacking rate of returns and that clean sheet points. Um, Last but not least, I'm going to be doing my team selection team tomorrow to show you guys players that I will be transferring out and transferring in. 
And I'm not sponsored by this company, but I do want to bring out uh, Fantasy Football Fix. It's really important that you guys catch up on price rises or falls. And I use that app to be able to determine price rises or falls so that I'm getting the best value for my players and being able to sell them before their price drops and being able to buy players before their price rises. So you're trying to save money to get those premium forwards and premium defenders. Premium forwards like a Jamie Vardy as a differential or uh, players like a Jimenez, who people are now looking into as a forward threat. Um, enjoy the rest of your week, everyone. I hope you all do well. And most importantly, don't be too focused on your overall rank. You will rise above it. And it's not a marathon. It's not a race. It's a marathon. More importantly, stay focused and have fun. But also don't take too many hits and try not try to save your chips and not use them if you don't have to. And try to roll on a free transfer if you can and save it on to a next game week where there's better fixtures and more promising rate of returns in terms of players um, such as a Man City in game week eight. I would look into a Cancelo or Diaz just as a defensive threat or even a Jack Grealish in midfield. Something to really look into. I'll be back tomorrow with a team selection video, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Take it easy and look after yourselves and each other. Last but not least, if you guys haven't clicked like on this video, do make sure to like the video and kindly subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more FPL content and also Arsenal post-match tactical breakdowns. I'm still buzzing over the North London Derby win, but also the Arsenal women's team trashed Man City women's 5-0. Hopefully I'll see more of those performances and be a lot more happier on here. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and bye for now.